2018 Porsche 911 Carrera This is a place of legends, where the best drivers ever have done their best work and where the ultimate driving gauntlet is thrown down every January. It's the most infamous, daunting, and exposed stage on the Ram Monte Carlo, and it's called Col de Torini. On its better days, it has snow at the top. And it's terrifying. That Porsche chose this road to debut yet another among the now 23 variants of 911 currently available. The 911 Carrera T demonstrates how enormous its co Jones truly are. Not because the TN covers significant new ground in the 911's already wide bandwidth of abilities, but rather because Porsche isn't afraid to send a lowered version of its brand defining sports car for evaluation on roads utterly unsuited to lowered sports cars. But 911s have history here, and they've won on these roads. If a 911 can shine on the Torini, then it can shine just about anywhere. The point of the T, for touring, is to be a Spartan model equipped with only the necessities that a dedicated driver might want. In truth, it is built from a combination of parts available elsewhere in the 911 line. The engine is the same one as in the Bass Carrera, the twin turbocharged 3.0-liter flat 6 pumping out 370 horsepower and 331 pounds to foot of torque, the most modest output among all current 911s. The engine is bolted to a standard 7-speed manual transaxle fitted with a 3.59 to 1 final drive ratio, slightly shorter than the base Carrera's 3.44 to 1, and a limited slip differential. Porsche's dual-clutch automatic, PDK, is optional and offers the same gear set, although it uses the teller of the two final drives. It's all housed within the narrow body Carrera's rear fenders. The lowering is thanks to the standard two-mode PASM Sport suspension, which brings the car down 0.4 inch relative to a base Carrera. Every 911T gets a lightweight version of the Sport Chrono package, which adds a steering wheel mounted driving mode selector and dynamic engine mounts but doesn't include the dash mounted chronometer. The T shares its thinner rear window and side glass with the GT2 RS, saving about 8 pounds, and its 20 inch titanium grey wheels with the car S. There are smaller details such as door release straps and a special front lip. When the T is equipped with the optional $5,200 carbon fiber full bucket seats, which aren't for everyone and also preclude the presence of the car's rear seats, total weight savings is 44 pounds relative to a standard Carrera. The 911T just might be the best 911 for this road. It's low but not too low. Its damping control is a thing of stunning effect. The softer of its two settings provided the compliance necessary to produce real grip in corners filled with chassis twisting undulations. Its steering is something magical for a car with a rear weight bias of well over 60%. Enough information is transmitted through the steering wheel to divulge when the front tires are overburdened, but because there's so much control available, regaining purchase was always possible. The standard short shifter ripped off gear changes with military precision and satisfying snap while freeing up tiny increments of time to return both hands to the wheel. And the T's standard sport exhaust howled against the stone canyon walls. But it's the T's seemingly benign engine that is perhaps its greatest asset on the Torini. Relatively small turbos dump enough boosts, 13.1 pounds per square inch peak, into the 3.0 liter that to work zeniths at 1,700 revolutions per minute. And that, in combination with the devastatingly effective limited slip differential, makes the T a thing of beauty exiting switchbacks. The key is to get into first gear early in the corner, feel for the front to grip, and then, as the road straightens, floor the throttle quickly but progressively. The result is a creamy smooth transition to easily controlled over steer. Hold your foot down until the tires catch up with the chassis and steer around anything in the way. Jam home second gear. Prince. Repeat. As verification of the 911 Carrera T's effectiveness on imperfect roads, Porsche was thoughtful enough to also bring along examples of the 911 GT3 touring package at the same time and included a winter tire equipped example in our tour of the calls in southern France. And despite the respect we have for the holy track or the GT3, it wasn't as good a car in this terrain. The taller, less powerful T haunted it with turbocharged to work at every corner exit while hoovering up the imperfect road surface with far more grace. It was also comfortably quicker in this scenario. Porsche will ask $103,150 for the T, $11,000 more than a base Carrera, when it hits dealers early next spring.
and although it might be a simple collection of parts, it's a shrewdly assembled, highly sorted, and well-chosen one partnered with an already staggeringly able chassis. It's a machine we could only hope to have in our own garage. Especially if that garage were at the bottom of a legendary pass in the French Alps.